Hello and welcome to our service this Sunday. It's wonderful that we can all come together, even if it is virtually, and today we're planning to replicate a cafe church service, because the second Sunday of the month would be our cafe church service in church. In a minute we'll have an opportunity to get some tea and make it a real cafe. But our theme today is God's household. God's household is very relevant and very apt because we're spending a lot of time in our homes at the moment due to the lockdown. And as part of this service, we will bless our homes and also take part in an agape meal, um, a meal where we come together to share what we have all at the same time and we'll bless that food. And that'll help us to remember that we're part of God's family, part of God's household. When Jesus met with his disciples to eat, it was always in a home. And it was over food that he taught them to love one another as he became their humble servant. So it's especially apt that as we bless our homes, as we come together with the theme of God's household, we lean into God in different ways. So please feel free to take part in as much or as little as you want. There's many aspects to the service and some you might enjoy, some less so. But just relax, lean into God, and remember this is all age, so the family can join in. Bring some resources along if you have them. In a moment we'll play some music, so feel free to go and get a cup of tea, maybe some cake, like I've got, and perhaps some juice or wine, um, bread, biscuits, whatever you'd like to join in um, with the Agape meal just whatever you've got really but some paper if you've got it some old packaging that works really well a pair of scissors and some felt tip pens maybe a biro just if you haven't got these it doesn't matter you can still join in by watching but if you have please feel free to go and get them now while the music plays and we'll see you back here in a minute Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. 
now to that part of our service where we're going to do the blessing of the house. This is something a little bit new, new that we're doing, but because we're spending a lot of time stuck in our houses at the moment, we're going to have a time in this service to pray for our houses and to ask for God's blessing on them. The church has a long tradition of blessing places and objects and praying, asking that God would use them to bless us. As part of that, we're going to have an opportunity, if you wish, to <coughs> make the sign of the cross um, towards the wall of the house as a sign of asking for God's presence and ownership. We mark things with the cross to show that they belong to God, whether that's a child at baptism, uh, sometimes ourselves during a service, or the crosses we put up on our churches. And so this is a chance to give our house over to God, to ask that he would make it his, that he would be present, bless it and protect it. So let's ask God's blessing on our homes. We are all God's children. As God's children, let each of us make a sign of the cross on the wall of our house. Peace be to this house, and to all who live in it, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, the Father of all the families of the earth, we ask that you fulfil the desire of your children, and grant to this house the favour and protection of your presence, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we sit in our homes, with God beside us, let us say together, Our merciful Saviour, who came to earth, humble and human, residing in an earthly home in Nazareth, send your blessing on all of us in this house. Protect and strengthen us. Show us your will for our lives, so that we may offer to you a faithful and willing service. Amen. O God, our Father, in whose house are many mansions, surround each of our homes with the wall of your protection, and grant that, once this life has ended, we, your children, may come to that home which you have prepared for us. Amen. This is a reading from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 to 22. For Christ himself has brought us peace by making Jews and Gentiles one people. With his own body, he broke down the wall that separated them and kept them enemies. He abolished the Jewish law with its commandments and rules in order to create out of the two races one new people in union with himself. In this way, making peace. By his death on the cross, Christ destroyed their enmity. By means of the cross, he united both races into one body and brought them back to God. So Christ came and preached the good news of peace to all, to you Gentiles who were far away from God, and to the Jews who were near to him. It is through Christ that all of us, Jews and Gentiles, are able to come in the one spirit into the presence of the Father. So then, you Gentiles are not foreigners or strangers any longer. You are now fellow citizens with God's people and members of the family of God. You too are built upon the foundation laid by the apostles and prophets, the corner stone being Christ Jesus himself. He is the one who holds the whole building together and makes it grow into a sacred temple dedicated to the Lord. In union with him, you too 
are being built together with all of the others into a place where God lives through his spirit. Welcome to my garden on Friday the 8th of May, which is both VE Day, a day to celebrate, and our wedding anniversary. Jill and I were married 44 years ago today. And we're celebrating with lunch, which will be served on that table, cooked in the barbecue, which is currently cooking, let's have a look, chicken and lamb steaks, and if we carry on round looking at the garden, there is a beautiful uh, display and a dry stone wall that I have been building. Oh, and you mustn't miss the wisteria hanging up behind me. We can remember buying this barbecue when we lived in Germany, serving with the Royal Air Force. We used to take it on caravanning holidays with our three daughters. And in Germany, you are allowed to cook a barbecue in a motorway service station. So we would arrive, get this out, cook lunch. And by the time we had eaten lunch, the barbecue will have cooled down enough. We could then put the lid back on. Let me just see if I can do that now. It cooks with the lid on like an oven and then it seals so you can pick it up and take it with you and it would go back in the caravan and we would get on our journey traveling around Europe. I brought you across the garden to show you the beautiful trees that are in flower behind me. They're evergreens at this time of year they flower and instead of being just green and brown leaves, get the beautiful white flowers. Let's come a little closer and have a look. Family is important to us all. We now have three daughters, all grown up, all left the nest, all with their own families and partners and spread across the world. <clears throat> one daughter is in Cambridge, one is in Surrey, and one is in Sydney, Australia. Family. We love our family and we stay in touch, more so since Amy went off to Sydney in Australia. Jill cried her eyes out saying she would never see her again, but actually they speak not just weekly, but almost daily on FaceTime, the connection is perfect and the opportunity to bring the other family member into our home and for us to see their home is absolutely wonderful. And of course, even in this time of lockdown, we're able to see our three grandchildren growing up. I have come across to the allotment area of the Vicarage Garden. We have apple trees, if you look closely, there are cherries growing on that tree and going right down, there are gooseberry bushes and at the bottom end are plum trees. We've had beautiful crops of those before. Two of these beds have got potatoes sown in them. Um, there's a rather lot of weeds also. And then you can see in the distance some rhubarb and here there has been, and maybe these are growing again, Jerusalem artichokes. But let me talk about family a little more. Family means so much to every one of us, whether they are near or distant, whether they are close or a little cold. I say that because on occasions at funerals and even particularly at weddings, you can see the dysfunctions, the breakages, the occasions that people have had to come together and don't really want to. But that is not the nature of what family is about. Family is about love and relationships. 
as the meat slowly cooks on the barbecue. Our celebration lunch is being laid in the garden by my beautiful wife, Jill. Say hello, Jill. Hello, Jill. <laughs> Whatever our own experience of family has been, we know what is best about family. Love, security, relationships, anticipation of what is to come, looking forward to greeting one another, hearing one's news, and seeing the family get on. My favorite verse in the Bible is John 10:10, 10, 10, where Jesus says, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. I cannot think of life without family, not just my own circle of family, but the family of the human race that lives around me, that I connect with, that I build relationships with. So that means the church family, that means my neighbours, that means the communities that live around. I have in my family people in a Hindu temple, people in mosques, Muslims living in Russell Street, people in Hope Into Action, people in the council, local police, friends, family, relationships, all built on the trust that comes to us from the Trinity, the center of relationships, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I want to talk about family from the point of view of three topics that came up in our reading from Ephesians. Peace, family, and the building. Peace, peace, peace. For Christ himself has brought us peace. In order to create, out of the two races, one new people in union with himself, in this way, making peace. And so Christ came and preached the good news of peace to all. No wonder it is significant that in our communion services, we have an activity called sharing the peace. This isn't just a friendly greeting of hello, shake hands, and why do we do it halfway through the service? Sharing the peace is about putting down all enmity, all disputes, all differences between us because we are a family and the best of families live at peace and at one with love and with joy. Now then, we have the family. And that is mentioned in our reading from the Good News Translation. Paul writes that you Gentiles are not foreigners or strangers any longer. You are now citizens together with God's people and members of the family of God. As a family, we are people in relationships. We are brothers and sisters to one another, uncle and aunt, niece and nephew. We are committed to one another and to God and God to us. Incidentally, in the New Revised Standard Version, instead of family of God, the word that is used is household, which is rather intriguing because we are currently assessed by the government as being in households. But let me move to my third point, the building. He is the one who holds the whole building together and makes it grow into a sacred temple dedicated to the Lord. This, of course, is not about the physical structure of the church building. It is always about building of the church, which is the body of Christ, the people, the family of God. Unless we are growing, we are not being God's family in the full spirit of Christ. How shall we achieve that growth? Not next year, not when the lockdown is lifted, but every day 
that we are church and God's family, to honour and bless our Lord, let us grow St Mark's into and beyond the community of the parish. Bless you for listening. And now let's celebrate my anniversary. Okay. Cheers. I'm signed on for another year. Happy anniversary. <laughs>Good morning, my name is Fiona. As a family, we try to eat together at least once every day. In normal times this is difficult, with two adults working full-time and two teenagers in full-time education, all of us juggling rehearsals, training, part-time jobs, church meetings and busy social lives. During lockdown it's still not that easy, it's a challenge to coordinate online meetings and, and meetups. But we're finding we're able to spend a lot more time together and we usually manage two meals a day as a family. I feel so lucky to have these opportunities to share what we've been up to and to discuss a full range of issues from the very serious to the downright silly. But we're all missing having other people around. Which got me to thinking, if you could share a meal with anyone from the Bible, who would you choose and why? What would you want to talk about with them? What would you want to ask them? In a moment, I'm going to play some music and give you a chance to think about which people from the Bible you would like to invite to a meal at your place. But before that, I'd like you to invite you to lunch with my family one day last week to hear our thoughts about who from the Bible we would like to share a meal with. So Murray, who would you invite? Um, to our biblical dinner party. I reckon I'd invite Noah because he was the only person worth keeping alive at that time. Yeah, I like that. Hugh? I'd invite Lazarus. <clears throat> Partly because I'd want to ask him the obvious question of what it's like to be dead. But I'd also want to ask him what it's like to be brought alive by Jesus in that way and what difference it made to him. Cool. I think I'd invite Mary and Martha because, um, well, I'd make Martha sit down and enjoy the meal and not lift a finger to help. What about you, Finian? Uh, I'd invite Joseph, because I want to know what it's like to be the favourite child. <laughs>so who would you have chosen who did you come up with and did you have a reason for coming up with that person i chose paul
I'd love to chat to Paul and ask him how he kept going amid all the things that were happening, being thrown into jail, the different companions he had and how he got on with some. I'd love to know about the ones he didn't get on with as well, because that's life, especially Christian life. What we're going to do now is another little activity. And as we do this, let's just have a think about who's in our family. Is it our church family? Is it our actual family? Who do we consider as our family? And we're going to make some little people. Here's one I prepared earlier. And here's my family. Here's Paul, right just there. It's not very salubrious, but it's a good reminder to me that I'm part of something much bigger, part of a family with God and with my church. Right, let's see how we're going to make it. Hope you've got that paper and the felt pens to hand. If not, a biro will do. And we'll fold that paper in half. And then each half we're going to fold into three. One. Two. I've got three sections. And then the same on the other side. It's not worked very well. There we go. So we should end up with a little concertina. Okay. I'm sure lots of you have done this before anyway. And we're going to draw the shape of a person. There's one really important thing that we have to do is make sure that their arms go all the way to the side. So the arms must, must touch at the side. And when we cut it out, we're going to cut round, but we mustn't cut the sides to make sure that the little arms join up. So we can trim that. I've done it differently this time. These ones have got a bit of a dress on. There we go. So I've cut round probably not very well and when I open them up we've got our family all joined together so while we're singing or while we're having another cup of tea feel free to have a go make one for yourself and put your family in but don't forget to put your biblical ca character in in a moment we're going to go into our time of prayer and again we'll be thinking about that joined up theme in what we're using. We'll need the felt tips again, we'll need the scissors again. But let's just have a moment before we all come back together. Hello and welcome to our time of prayer. So we've got some practical prayers, a craft activity to start with. So while we're doing it, we will play some music and then afterwards we'll come back together and we'll use what we've made for our prayers. So hopefully if you've got a piece of paper, this one is half of an A4 sheet, but anything will do, fold it in half and then bend it back to make quarters. So you've got a little zigzag. Then on the front or the back, doesn't matter which, mark out two squares. In the top corners and two rectangles in the bottom corners. So you've made the shape of a cross. Now with our scissors, we're going to cut away those bits. Just to show you. We're going to cut away the shaded bits all the way through all the layers.
and what we should be left with is the shape of a cross but when we open it our crosses will be joined together we've got four crosses so we need to come up with four people four things four situations that we want to pray for and they'll be different for each of us I did one earlier on and I've put on there the four things that I want to pray for so while the music plays make yours and decorate it and when we come back together in a minute we'll lift all of our prayers together to God and then there'll be a prayer for us to finish with Let us lift to God all of our prayers by saying together, Our dear Father, Head of the family of God, of our family, we thank you for always being there for us, to help us when we have family struggles. We thank you for the joy you bring at different times of our lives. We thank you for food we share and enjoy as families the togetherness we have in sharing it. But at this time we ask you, our glorious Father, to be in the centre of all of the situations or with all of the people that we have put on our joined crosses. Let us keep them as a reminder to us and to you, the situations close to our hearts that need prayer. We lift to you all of our prayers. Amen. It's now time to come together to share food, just, as the, just in the way that Jesus taught his disciples. Come together as God's family in God's household. So I hope you managed to get something to share earlier on. I've got some juice and some cake. And we'll just... Relax as we bless these and come together. We're all invited to the common table to share in this agape feast. At this table, we come as brothers and sisters in the holy family of God. Taste and see that God is good. Let's take our food. As we eat this food, we thank you, God, for our food which delights and nourishes us and for the companionship you give that sustains us.
let's take our drink. We thank you too, God, for drink to quench our thirst and for the living water which you will surprise and enrich and transform our lives with. Giving God, bless all who have gathered to eat. May we know the fullness of your presence at every meal and in all our sharing. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, Jesus taught us that whoever does your will are his mother, his brothers and sisters. We thank you for bringing us all together as your family to pray, praise, worship and listen to your teaching, each of us equal and loved by you and loving each other. We pray that as we go in unity and love and faith, we pray the grace, grace of our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ and the love, and the of, love of God, God and, and the, the fellowship, fellowship of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us, be with with us all, all evermore. Amen. Amen. It has been great to be able to come to together today to worship our God. We hope you have enjoyed this service. We'll be back again at 10.30 next Sunday. Do feel free to join us as we go from being, being, being gathered, let's share our blessings together. May the Father from whom every family on earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen us with his spirit in our inner being, so that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith, and that knowing his love, broad and long, deep and high beyond our knowledge, we may be filled with the fullness of God. And we do very much hope that you will join us again. It's been wonderful to gather as the family of God. And whilst our church building might be locked down, 
the church is very much alive and busy.